blessings. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and good night from wherever you may be joining us from. I want to welcome you to Art Shouts. It's the Art and Wellbeing podcast segment with your host, yours truly, Carolyn Renee, the executive director here at the Arts Exchange. Uh, we are actually the Southeast Community Cultural Center, and we do business as the Arts Exchange. And again, it is a great honor to be here with you for this segment of Art Shouts. And um, our podcast is produced right here in East Point at our cultural center. And it really centers the voices of creative artists and healers who intentionally use their art to bring healing to others. And today I have the honor and the privilege to be joined by Kimberly Pure Foy. And she has some other names, like you could take that pure foy and turn it into pure joy because that's what she brings to the planet. She brings healing to the planet and she is a writer. She is a mover, but above all those things, she's a mother and she's a healer and she enjoys and finds passion in helping others with their well-being and their self-expression their truest self-expression. So I want to welcome you, Kim, to the Art Shouts podcast. Thank you you so much. I'm really blessed and honored to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. And, you know, there's a long bio with many, many accomplishments, but I like to ask our guests, to share with the audience, how do you want us to know you? And just invite you to share whatever it is that you want us to know. And and I also want to open up an invitation to not hold back. So (laughs) share with us. Not hold back, wow. (laughs) Well, um, Well, first of all, I have embraced the title and thank you for saying that I've embraced the title as healer. And um, I I admit that I've been uh, reluctant to embrace that title because it seemed like it required a, a, you know, it was just such a tall order to fulfill and it required so many qualifications (laughs) to be that. But I've embraced it because um, I accept that that's a, um, a, a purpose that I have and it's a it's a gift that I have and I just want to um, as I say who I am encourage other people to embrace that um, light and that anointing within themselves because everybody has a power and a purpose to heal in some way it doesn't require um, all kinds of degrees or PhDs or things like that you know it, it just um, requires the um, the willingness to be open as a vessel because we all have something within us to share and uplift, you know, as a, as the old scripture says, or the song says, you know, let your light shine. So uh, I am a healer and I am also um, a health educator, a natural health educator and an advocate um, advocating for everyone's right to be well and to be informed uh, on uh, different ways to do that, that fit them. And um, as you said, I am a mother as well, and I, I'm a I'm a writer, <laughs> and um, and also this this other title that um, I've been a little reluctant to embrace, but I am uh, embracing that as a dancer again, thinking that I had to have you know uh, dance with Alvin Ailey <laughs> to be qualified as a dancer, but. Um, I uh, embrace that as well because dance is a part of healing. So those are parts of what I am and also a, a sister and a um, and a light. And, uh, you know, say namaste, I, I um, behold the light and the Christ within you as well. Kim, thanks. Thank you so much. And indeed, you are a light, uh, Kimberly. And I want to ask you, you know, when did you realize that this was part of your calling, your mission, and the this that I'm speaking of is healing and helping others to tap into 
their divine healing well within their own spirits? When did you awaken to this as your mission and calling? Well, I would say in layers, but um, at one point it was uh, some years ago, around 2008 or 2009, when I started actively um, pursuing it in terms of um, educating people at present uh, presentations and um, health events and um, sharing um, information and products and services and things like that. So, um, you know, I have a couple of mentors um, who are uh, naturopathic doctors who I just started kind of uh, following around and studying as well as doing my own studying and education around that. And so there came a point in time where um, I kind of, you know, the apron strings were cut somewhat gradually and I was kind of standing on my own and was unsure and I always kind of wanted that 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 crutch and that um, safety net of having them with me. And sometimes it just wouldn't work out. The timing just would not work out for them to be available. And it got to a point where it's like, you know, I've taught you all that I can teach you. And so when I would have to kind of show up on my own and to and to see um, the response for pe from people who um, were sharing uh, their testimonies from uh, things that they had learned from me over time. And some of them were basically saying, we want you, we, we want you. And over a period of time hearing just more and more testimonies. And I'm like, wow, some things, a lot of things I have forgotten, uh, classes I had taught um, and just to, to hear and receive the feedback, I, re I realized that I was um, really um, doing a disservice to what the creator put me here for to continue to um, question that. But I, you know, that's that's one um, point when I started to realize that this really is um, what you're called to do. And, you know, it continued on uh, being the wellness manager at, at Sevenanda uh, for, for several years over the past years and really getting that same kind of um, feedback um, with testimonies and people coming, you know, we, you and I were talking about a documentary that we were in some years ago. And, you know, there were other documentaries and just, you know, people coming, you know, who had been impacted by the information that was shared. And so I've, I've just embraced it and realized, you know, it's, it's not even just what you know, or I may know that comes from a book, you know, people want to know first, uh, and feel first, how much you care and they want to feel your light and they want to feel your heart. And that really is the, to me, the, 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 the greater realization, um, because, you know, everything to me comes down to how people feel and a lot of their even health issues, uh, a lot of times stem from how we feel. And then, you know, the other factors, um, connect to that. So, you know, those are, some of the experiences I've had over time to help me to realize that um, that this is something that I'm um, duty bound and gifted and meaning it's a gift to me to be able to um, offer. Okay, thanks for that. You know, um, I think our listening audience is very diverse, but we are an art and cultural organization. And I want to ask you to speak about um, your new venture. We, we spoke briefly about Kim Pure Joy Express. And just the, I think in our conversation before today, it was really about how do we show up and express the pure joy mm -hmm. of our light and the creativity of that, because a lot of times we think about creativity in terms of, you know, the ability to draw, the ability to sing a song, to write a song or to paint. But creativity, you know, the well of creativity, as we were discussing, runs way, way, way deep. And so I just want you to speak to um, the importance of, you know, being able to express that joy that we 
have in our lives through creative expression. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, my name being Kim Purefoy, which is um, my Mayrit name. And so, you know, when I went through a divorce and I'll just say uh, my, my ex-husband, he wanted his name back. <laughs> You know, so it was quite not quite a Tina Turner situation with the name where it was like, you know, just I just take my name, you know, but but at any rate, it was, you know, it's not no kind of abuse like that. But it was just the thing where it's like, you know, this is my name now and this is my children's name is Pure Boy. And, uh, you know, I thought it was kind of a, a kind of an interesting name that sounded a little, a little not so cool at first. But then I started to embrace it as people you know, would say and try to pronounce it and they would mispronounce it and call it pure joy. So I just embraced that um, as uh, having a spirit about it, a pure joy. And so as life went on and time with, went on and, um, you know, I, I, I've been in, in natural health for a few years now and I've been always such a nerd uh, reading and wanting to know all the details and facts about, you know, how this happens and how that happens. And all that's important, but oh, oh, as life continues to happen, I, I really um, just embrace more the holistic aspect of healing that we're talking about, which is mind, body, and soul, and spirit, and energy, and light. And even though I was always aware of that, I didn't feel that um, that other more esoteric form of it was something that I could really um, uh speak on so much or help people with so much. And then as years went on, I realized that actually it is, it is something that I can um, help people with. I want that, I wanted that to be a part of my, of my um, offering to people, but I felt that other people would have to handle that part of it. And I'm still open to that, but I realized that as I heal myself and as we heal ourselves, we can be open to, invite others to come along for that journey because, um, you know, every day is, um, is, is a gift. And you know how the saying goes, tomorrow is not promised. And one of my mentors, uh, would say, um, each day, what I do basically is how I earn my breath each day. You know, how do I earn my breath each day? So what do we do? We serve, we give, we do something to earn our breath each day. So I realize that as I'm going along with my healing journey, well, I can still, you know, um, offer those ways that I do it myself. So what I what I just kind of um, ended up doing on, just naturally on my own is dancing. I mean, you know, we as a people, all people, you know, we are moved and inspired by music. I mean, you know, you're a beautiful singer and artist yourself. I always wish I could sing and um I, you know, I just really admire people that can sing. And so, um, but the, what I do, um, I, I can't say I can do it so well, but we all can move. We all can dance. And there's a saying that goes, issues get in the tissues, you know? So um, I realized that as we move and that we, we, some of us were raised in the church where they, we do what we call, um, you know, the holy dance and all that we, you know, the uh, different cultures do the rain dance, but we can move and, and, um, and, and bring and move energy through our bodies. And that is a form of healing. So that's how I help myself. And so I kind of got out of my way and out of my kind of natural born shyness. And I ended up posting it, <laughs> uh, posting a dance video, uh, I guess a few years ago now, and uh, a little nervous about it, but I did it. And um, people kind of responded, and it was really, um, it was really good to see or hear that people are actually inspired by that. And so um, I, I watched one of your, I watched a, a production you all did recently for Women's History Month. Um, and you interviewed several people and, um, th th that was just a beautiful production that, um, I, uh, encourage other people to watch and, and, and the song uh, that you wrote and the interviews that were done. But one of the interviews was with the woman, I believe it was Dr. Teresa Howard. Yes. And, um, she called herself among many, many things, 
uh, I believe it was dance movement therapist. And so I am even more inspired by that because I was like, yeah, that's, that's what I want to be when I grow up, a dance movement therapist. <laughs> and so at any rate, that, that is something, um, the, the dance piece, but not just dance. Like you said, we, we are all, uh, we have all forms of creative creativity just in the world and amongst, amongst people. And it, it could be singing, it could be dancing, it could be the way someone walks and the way they sway their hips, you know, the way they move their neck, the way they, you know, do their hands, um, humor, comedy. Everybody has something about them that's their form of expression and that can be a healing um, form of healing for other people if they just share it, continue to share it. Yeah, I give thanks for that, Kim. And one thing that um, our listening audience needs to know about you in addition to uh, being an extraordinary mover, because I'm one of the individuals who got to see that uh, video of you dancing. And I'm like, I didn't know Kim could dance like that. So <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're an amazing mover. But the other thing that I love, love, love about Kimberly Pure Joy is that you spread joy through humor. You have an amazing sense of humor and will have folk on the floor. Um, so where did you get that from? And well, you know, I'm serious, I love that about you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I really do appreciate that. Um, just because whatever you do, even whether it's intentional or not, you know, it could be cooking, it could be singing, it could be sewing. It be, you know, it's really a uh, wonderful to hear that uh, it 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 lifts people up, you know. And so, um, especially with humor, uh, a lot of times when um, you say, I, I may say something. And I didn't know it was funny, but it's just a good feeling to know that it, it really lifted somebody up. And so where I got that from, that's hard to say. It's kind of like, where, where did I get my, you know, my, the way I walk or something like that? I don't know. Uh, I never, my, my uh, father was killed when I was 17. And a lot of things I don't remember about him, but they say that I walk like him. They used to say, you walk just like your father. And I'm thinking, I wish I remembered how he walked, <laughs> you know, but obviously I got something, I got that from him. So humor, if I could say, it's always, I mean, you know, that's our culture. That's how we kind of cope with things. And it's, I think it's a natural thing within our family in particular. Um, I just always been around it and I love people that are just real and down to earth. Um, but, you know, of course you also have to have some tact with it too. And uh, my mother, uh, you know, it was just always been a naturally funny person. And I was always a quiet, shy one, just, you know, kind of sitting under in her shadows most of my life. And so she probably still doesn't realize that I'm as kind of vocal and, you know, kind of out there, you know, not out there, but, you know, kind of, you know, kind of open as I am in certain ways. Um, and I also, I, I love Carol Burnett. <laughs> and, um, I just love, I just love to make people happy. I love to make people laugh. And I, like I said, to me, everything comes down to how people feel and beyond the nutrients and vitamins and herbs, which are all very important. But, but, um, I remember in the movie, um, the, uh, the documentary, the secret, and there was, um, you, you all probably remember there was one segment where a woman had been dealing with, I think, uh, cancer. I'm not sure if it was a terminal diagnosis, but it was a very serious diagnosis of cancer. And one of the things she did was she watched funny movies every day, you know, and um, that was a very real part of her healing. And, you know, it's, 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 it's very real. And it, uh, I believe it's scientifically proven that the way we feel impacts our, even our health on a cellular level. So, um, um, I, um, I just absorb it. I just, I just ob observe people and, um, you know, I just like to lighten things up and, you know, make people happy as I also entertain myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very entertaining. And I'm thinking now when we post this, I might have to find one of those, uh, videos and pass it on to Aziza so she can post it with this 
with this podcast so that our listening audience can really get an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, I was watching something. You were interacting with your nephew and there was a turtle <laughs> that you all passed on the road and you created this whole story about this turtle. I was howling and I think I even posted um, a comment to that. But uh, I was also thinking about your mother, Miss Janet Jackson, who is hilarious. You know, I've had the <laughs> honor of meeting her and she does have a beautiful sense of humor and yeah. makes us laugh as well. So, yeah. The, the other thing I love, love, love about Kimberly Pure Joy is you you are a fighter for justice. The Arts Exchange is an art organization as well as a uh, social justice organization. We combine those two things together. But I know firsthand um, from having worked in another capacity before I became the executive director of the Arts Exchange, how you stand up for justice, not only for yourself, but for other people. And I want to ask you to speak a little bit about that passion, like what fuels that passion for you um, in terms of standing up for what's right? Wow, thank you. And um, first of all, much respect to you and the Arts Exchange, you know, for being a center and a representation in this, um, and a force for um, the arts and for and for justice. I mean that that's that's so powerful. So I really respect that. Um, you know what ins inspires me, or um, if that was a question, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where, where, where does that get fueled inside of you? You know, it, it's it's. I think it's one of those things again. You know, like I said, like you asked me, where did the humor come from? I mean, it's just always been a part of the air that I breathe. Um, and I would have to say, honestly, my mother, um, you know, that Scorpio woman, you know, <laughs> it's always been a force. And, you know, from and, and, you know, we all come from a people that that that's that, you know, stood for something in, in, in our own different ways. So, you know, again, I was that quiet, shy child and kind of timid a little bit. And, you know, when things would happen at school and I tell my mother and you know, she would go talk to the teacher and all that kind of thing. And so I kind of learned that you have to speak up and you, you may not do it in another person's way, but it's just something within us, you know, that it's like there's there's a truth principle within us. And when I feel that thing in my gut, as they say, old folks say is when something don't sit right, it's hard for me to live with myself with the thought that, um, you know, when I when I question myself about what is the principle of the situation and what is it that keeps me from standing on it or speaking on it? I mean, we all, of course, have to pick and choose our battles, um, but there there's just something within us where, where, where there's a force and a spirit of truth within us where it's a gut feeling. You know, and then so when I question myself and I, when I feel that way and I question myself, I'm like, OK, so, Kim, why would you why would you not speak the truth? And if it comes down to fear, you know, they say F.E.A.R. false evidence appearing real, then I have to question myself further and, you know, and then decide, well, what's the principle and, and would I be more part of the the, the so-called problem? you know, um, by not just doing, as they say, the right thing. So that doesn't mean that I have to fight every battle, but it's just being able to live with myself, to be honest with you. And most of the, uh, you know, many of the challenges that I end up, you know, in dealing with in life, a lot of them is because I'm, I'm kind of standing for something and I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'm no saint or anything like that. But a lot of times it's, you know, involving that with, other, you know, trying to stand for something with other for other people. I remember at jobs um, in corporate America, uh, you know, kind of like the thing as a healer. When you asked me before about when did I start to realize that same with with this thing, you know, in terms of being an advocate. Um, 
when I when I um when I come across people who knew me years ago and then they say, you know, you've always been that way. <laughs> you know, same with same with the health um, aspect of me and being a healer. When people acknowledge me and they remind me of who I am and they say, you know, you were always like that. I mean, I knew you back when. Um, I recently had a situation I've been dealing with and years ago I worked as a paralegal advocate at a nonprofit organization, a nonprofit law office for the homeless. And so I recently spoke to um, someone that I know who was an attorney there and I was talking about a current situation I was dealing with. And she's like, Kim, you don't even have to explain to me. She's like, I know you. I know you. And, you know, she reminded me of myself way back when. That was 20 years ago, um, advocating for the homeless. Um, you know, I wasn't an attorney, but I would represent them at, at the housing uh, hearings uh, with the housing authority and win most of the time to get them housing. And, um, you know, advocate at um, uh, DFAX hearings. Well, I couldn't advocate in that capacity because I was an attorney, but I would do all the legwork and everything surrounding the cases. And then beyond that, um, I was uh, I was very inspired to become a CASA, a court appointed special advocate for children with Fulton County Juvenile Court. And that was a volunteer position. And so that allowed me another form of advocacy. So um, I guess it, it was just always something that was in, you know, that was within me. It's something I learned from my mother. And I remember one situation years ago, I was grown then, but, you know, still kind of being a little fearful uh, with the unjust situation at a job. And I remember I was talking to my mother and she was like, don't you dare, don't you dare let someone do that to you. And I'm like, well, what about this and what about that? I have to pay my bills and all this. She was like, at some point, you have to stand up. And I will never forget her quote. She said, and let the chips fall where they may, mm -hmm. you know. And so in that situation, I did. I stood up, you know, and uh, in whatever way that looked like at that time. And I spoke the truth and I let the chips fall where they may. And what happened was really nothing. I mean, nobody... <laughs> You know, nothing really happened, you know, because I guess it was such a shock. <laughs> and I was, I, you know, what I was saying was true. So that's just something, like I said, it's just, it's just within me. And, um, and something I just constantly challenge myself to stand up to is all. And I, I don't always do it to the fullest. Um, um, but I, you know, I do it um, according to my conscience. Good, thanks. Really appreciate that about you. You know, I want to shift back over to the creative, creative side of things. Um, you know, this is art and well-being, and thinking about um, this, I guess, moniker or idea that artists have to starve. You know, you have to, you know, be a starving artist. I think. The, the newer generation of artists, I really believe I'm seeing them turn away from that idea mm -hmm. that in order to be creative and live your art, you have to starve. And it's an idea that I've never uh, personally bought into, that you have to be a starving artist. Right. And I bring that up because of well-being. You know, this is the right. art and well-being podcast, right? right? And I think now there tends to be choices that people make based on, you know, am I going to choose my health or am I going to, you know, do something different? Um, you know, ignore my health and my well-being. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about um, my friend and your friend, Sister Iphany, you know, she always says, either pay the pharmacy or pay the farmer, you know, so in other words, you know, choose your wellness or, you know, kill yourself with medicine. But um, I want to also acknowledge that that mm -hmm. last statement does not reflect the arts exchange. That's just my own personal uh, philosophy. But I am interested for the sake of the listening audience if you would share just some pearls of wisdom about well-being, you know, just some basic things that creative individuals and non-creatives, you know, people who don't consider themselves the artists could, you know, do mm -hmm. to increase their 
wealth as it relates to their health, you know, mm -hmm. especially given the times that we're living in mm -hmm. and, you know, what could I do to really take care of my, my constitution, my health, mm -hmm. fuel my creativity, even as an artist, you know, sometimes, and I know a couple artists who've been sick and, you know, don't have money to go to the doctor. So mm. just curious about, you know, some pearls of wisdom that you would share with the audience about things that they could do, you know, our scenario that we are used to, if it were me, you know, so that we don't uh, come across as prescribing or even recommending, but just from the standpoint of what you know to be true as a healer and mm -hmm. somebody who has helped a lot of people um, heal themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, first um, about um, on the, on the, the term that you were speaking of in terms of starving artists um, and the wealth and the well-being factor, um, you know, of course we know wor words are very powerful and of course we know where that term came from be in terms of um, the starving artist concept and the fact that, you know, we haven't placed, um, I guess traditionally a lot of value around um, the 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 value in an economic way around the arts and being an artist and really valuing that and so that um, the people that do that as a living can be uh, bountifully compensated for that and have the means to be able to take care of themselves and to make a living and also be able to uh, pay themselves, you know, for things to take care of their health. Um, so that, you know, that's one thing I think that we all just need to upgrade our understanding about the value of the arts and compensating and paying artists um, for what they do um, and including uh, natural health practitioners and, and all of that. I mean, that's just part of our, it's part of our, of our cultures um, to have um, medicine men and women <clears throat> and, and they should be taken care of so that they can offer and do what they do. And as far as taking care um, of our health, particularly during this time and um, any wisdom that I could share, I would say on a practical level, one very um, important thing that we need to do is to make sure that we are getting enough vitamin D. D is in David, vitamin D. And of course we get that naturally from the sun, but you know, a lot of the year, we're not able to do that as much as we can. So if, if not that, then definitely we need to supplement. Vitamin D is so important. And even in terms of the concerns about uh, the coronavirus and um, that sort of thing, uh, the people that um, test positive you know, um, oftentimes are deficient. And doctors have said, um, and, you know, these are integrative medicine doctors who uh, acknowledge both sides, uh, that a lot of times they're deficient in vitamin D. And even a lot of the deaths are uh, deficient in vitamin D. And for, particularly for people of color, we know that our need for vitamin D is even greater. So if it were me, uh, I would be, if I'm not in the sun enough, you know, and able to get um, that during the colder months especially, I would be supplementing with, uh, I would say approximately two to 5,000, and they call them IUs of vitamin D a day. I would be doing that. And I could just boldly say, y'all should be doing that <laughs> because um, even doctors are, are prescribing vitamin D now and acknowledging vitamin D deficiency. But what they're prescribing is norm, it is not normally. It is a synthetic version of vitamin D and it's vitamin D2, which doesn't assimilate as well as the body. So vitamin D is hugely important for the immune system and for the heart, for everything to work. Vitamin D is, a, is one of the big things. And uh, nowadays, a lot of companies are getting uh, becoming aware of adding vitamin K2 to it. So I would get a supplement that has vitamin D3 and K2 with it. Vitamin K2 is very, very important because one, you know, um, it helps the vitamin D to work better. It, it, it's a cofactor, they call it with vitamin D, but K2 is important because it's going to help 
prevent cancer. It's going to help uh, men with the prostate. But it, it, even more importantly, it's going to help the calcium to not uh, block up your arteries. And mm -hmm. a lot of times as we get older, you can see like our elders with um, their, their hands, um, you can see calcifications that have occurred, the knuckles and things like that, or the posture uh, is maybe not as erect. Um, and that a lot of time is a mineral deficiency. But if we get more K2 ahead of time, we can kind of stay, keep our posture erect and keep our bones strong and, you know, all that sort of thing. So vitamin D would be one of the main things. Zinc, zinc is hugely important because um, that's very antiviral. And if we look at our nail beds and you see what, if you happen to see white lines, um, that indicates um, a zinc deficiency. So really all of the minerals, but those in particular, zinc, selenium are hugely important. Magnesium, you know, I talk about the magnesium queen. I talk about magnesium all the time, and that's hugely important for the heart and for um, stress and uh, high blood pressure. So um, the other thing is, um, and speaking of stress, is, um, is just trying to avoid stress as much as possible because stress and fear those are hugely impactful on our immune system and on our heart. So those would, you know, be some of the main things. Oh, and, you know, I could go on and on if you get me <laughs> on the health roll. But the last one thing is um, omega-3s. So, you know, old school, of course, it was cod liver oil. And that was um, a huge benefit to our health. But um, nowadays, uh, since most people don't do cod liver oil or if we're vegan, um, we still need omega-3, so the plant source of it would be um, flaxseed or hemp seed, but particularly more so flaxseed because the, the um, dosage may be a little bit higher, um, but um, not as high as a fish oil. If you're going to take a fish oil, I would definitely uh, do a quality fish oil, but omega-3s are hugely important for everything. And, um, you know, I'll just leave it there for the moment. Yeah, well, we really appreciate those pearls of wisdom, Kimberly. I want to uh, shift gears a little bit. We have something that we call a speed round, right? So I'll just ask you some questions and then you'll just popcorn the answer to me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to start by asking what personal healing modality is your go to when you face challenges? Dance. What it's your current passion project. My daughter's nonprofit, a nonprofit in honor, in honor of my daughter. What gift are you taking from the pandemic? Slowing down and being at home more. Good, thanks. And for our listening audience who would like to get in touch with you beyond our podcast today, how might they do that? My telephone number is 404-965-5825. Again, that's 404-965-5825. The website that will be up very soon is, and when I say very soon, um, it may be by the time this airs, is Pure Joy, P U R E J O Y, Health Express.com. Pure Joy Health Express.com. And um, I'm on um, Instagram as Kim Pure Joy, at Kim Pure Joy. So, those are the ways to reach me. And the phone number is also on text or call. Again, that's 404-965-5825. Thank you for being so open and sharing with us this afternoon from your heart and soul and just love myself some Kim Pure Joy. And I'm so grateful that you made time to um, join us and also want to thank you for acknowledging the work of uh, Aziza Shepherd, who produced that uh, piece that you spoke about that the Arts Exchange produced for Women's History Month. So thank you for taking time to look at our work. 
Oh, yes. I was very inspired by that. And Thank uh, you. much. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge, uh, I need another word than fan, but, you know, just I'm usually inspired by you, Sister Carolyn, as well. And you all keep up the good work, Sister Aziza. And it's been a blessing and honor to be here and to share. Thank you again. All right. Let's do it again. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Give thanks. Thank you.